done. Ah! Stun guns are a non-lethal weapon designed to inflict pain and disrupt the body. And as you saw, they do a pretty good job at this. So please don't try any of this at home. With that being said, stun guns work by emitting a really high voltage charge. This one is probably around 20,000 volts. Now you may think that a voltage as high would be deadly. In fact, a while ago I made a Jacob's Ladder that was 2,000 volts and that was deadly. So what's different about a stun gun? Well, it all has to do with the relationship between voltage and current. Voltage is the power or the potential to do work in an electrical field, and current, on the other hand, is how much electricity or how many electrons pass by in a certain amount of time. And it's current that hurts you and not voltage. If you think of electricity like water, the stun gun is a lot like a pressure washer. Yeah, it hurts because there's a lot of power behind that water, but there's not enough water here to drown me. Putting your fingers in an electrical socket, on the other hand, is a lot like getting a bucket of water dumped on your head. <laughs> the water's not moving that fast, but there's a lot of water and it's really, really cold. Even though this stun gun produces a really high voltage, its current is only about 20 milliamps, or two tenths of an amp. To put that in perspective, a typical wall outlet has 20 amps, or a thousand times more electrons moving through it. So, if amps is what causes the pain, then what's the point of having so many volts? Well, it all has to do with resistance. As you probably know, conductors allow electricity to flow, and insulators don't. Now, luckily, our skin is a pretty good insulator, and that is why you don't feel anything when you stick your fingers on a 9-volt battery. But insulators can only go so far. So when 20,000 volts is applied, that electricity has enough force to go through the skin. In fact, at voltages that high, the skin itself breaks down. So dry, thick skin can have a resistance of half a million ohms. However, if that skin is wet, that resistance can drop down to a thousand ohms. And that is why you can feel a 9-volt battery when you touch it to your tongue. Ow. <laughs> so needless to say, many factors can change how electricity affects the body. And that is what can make stun guns very dangerous. But how do these stun guns produce 20,000 volts. Well, if we open it up, we see that it's pretty simple. First off, there's a battery, but it's really nothing special. It's only about four and a half or five volts. The real magic happens in the high voltage generator. Now this whole thing is sealed in by some sort of resin, but by taking apart a broken one, we see a few things. The most important are these two transformers. These transformers are able to step up the voltage using physics. Now, you see, whenever a current is run through a wire, it creates a magnetic field around it. Now, the field around a single wire like this is very, very small. However, if we wrap this wire around many, many times, we can actually create a pretty strong magnetic field. In fact, this is how electromagnets work, as there's an electromagnetic field around the iron and that makes it magnetic. Now this runs on direct current, or DC. However, for transformers, we need alternating current, or AC. So before the transformer, there's a small circuit that converts it from DC to AC. Now since the current alternates, the magnetic field is constantly changing size and polarity. And this is vital for the transformers. Now this is a really big transformer from a microwave, but I assure you that it works in the same way. On the bottom, we have the primary coil, and this coil converts that electrical current into a magnetic field. This magnetic field is so strong that it's able to induce an electric field in the secondary coil on top without touching it. The field basically pulls the free electrons from the wire on the top back and forth, and that's what makes the electrical current. Now you might notice that this secondary coil has a lot more turns than the primary coil, and that is actually what brings up the voltage. Now this makes sense, because when you have more loops, you have more wires in that magnetic field, and the power of all of these loops sort of add together and increase the voltage. 
However, the law of conservation of energy is a thing, so if we increase the voltage, the current has to decrease, so the total amount of energy in the system stays the same. Now this works out perfectly for our stun gun and gives us a nice high voltage but low amperage charge. So at this point we have a perfect charge, but there's one more important thing in that high voltage generator, a capacitor. This capacitor holds a charge in between all of these tiny little metal plates, and that is what allows a current to build up in the capacitor as some of that extra energy from the transformer goes into it. As we see with this capacitor from a disposable camera, once it gets shorted out by a piece of skin, or the screwdriver for that matter, all of that charge is released. This allows for an even higher charge to be released when the stun gun first comes in contact with skin. Now this was a bit of an oversimplification, and there are still a few more components that are left in a stun gun, but I hope that this was a good overview, and I hope you never have to experience a stun gun firsthand. Now thank you so much for watching, if you enjoyed watching this as much as I enjoy creating this video, minus the stun gun part, <laughs> then uh, please leave a like or subscribe. And thanks to all my wonderful patrons who allow me to make these videos. Thanks. The stun gun is a lot like the pressure washer. Yeah, it hurts because there's a lot of water hitting me, but the water doesn't... Oh, <laughs>